Good morning. Hi, Hugo. Joyce. Good morning. How was your weekend, Tracy? Oh, insulting. I went out with one of those guys who thinks that just because he's a big shot producer, I'm going to go up to his apartment. Oh? Was it a nice apartment? <laughs> I seem better. Hi, Hugo. Uh, say, Tracy, are you doing anything? I'm on... busy then. <laughs> you didn't even let me tell you when. Pick a date. <laughs> Tracy, how come you'll never go out with me? You're always busy. Doug, let's just say you're not my type. Oh, what type am I? You're spineless, ineffectual, nothing but a network underling, a coward, and a toady. <laughs> and I hope you don't take that the wrong way. Of course not. If you're busy, you're busy. You about ready to start? Uh, we're waiting for Fletcher. John, uh, the network brass was thinking. Go on. <laughs> well, they discovered that lots of kids watch television. You guys don't miss a trick. <laughs> and they figured if we could put one in our show, more kids would watch it. How would we do that? What if undercover woman had a baby? A baby? Huh? You mean they want undercover woman pregnant? There goes my Toreador pants. Uh, okay, okay, uh, maybe she doesn't have the baby herself. Maybe it's abandoned, she finds it, and they raise it in the police station. Doug, this is a police show, and putting a baby in it is dumb, ludicrous, and idiotic. John, this is the week they decide if they're going to cancel the show. But an idea worth considering. John, may I speak to you for a moment? Does that mean we have to hire a stunt baby? We aren't going to go along with this insane suggestion. We have to, Joyce. The ratings for this program are, what shall I say, somewhat marginal. Yes, I understand that. Last week, we finished a half a point behind a documentary on the election. Yes, I know. The election in Bolivia. I realize. Which was a rerun. Yes, I know. In Spanish. Oh. I'm not going to humiliate myself in front of millions of people by having undercover woman turn into nothing more than a nursemaid. The alternative is cancellation. But then again, what's a mother to do? <laughs> oh, great. Just a few more questions now, Mitzi. Uh, uh, down at that pet shop of yours, what animal do you sell the most of? Fish. Ah. Fish, good. Now, think carefully. What is it about fish? What do they do that makes people keep coming back to buy more of them? Die. Now, that's not what I want. I'm looking for a quality that makes an animal lovable. Is there any particular fish people seem to love? Oh, well, I don't think fish are particularly lovable. What pets are? Dogs. Aha! People like dogs. <laughs> now we're cooking. Hi. Hi, Doug. Hi, Joyce. Is there any particular breed especially popular, Mitzi? No. But people do seem to be buying more big dogs these days. What are you doing? Consulting an expert. I have to choose a pet. Oh, for whom? For the show. Okay, Mitzi, I want you to get the biggest Hold dog. It. What do you mean for the show? The network figures the dog will complement the baby. See, if the baby attracts X number of kids, adding a dog will make that double X. Unless, of course, we lose the adults. Then we'll end up with half X, which is exactly how this idea strikes me. Joyce, we're just thinking of the ratings. Doug, I love dogs. I really do. But the, putting one on the show is a stupid idea, and you know it. It wasn't my idea. I'm just passing it on. Doug, you shouldn't pass on someone else's stupid idea. I'm sure you can think up one of your own. That's just what Tracy said. 
Margaret, I'm nothing but a network errand boy. That's why she won't go out with me. Well, she has a point, Doug. The network pays you to think, not just be a yes man. Isn't that right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, of course it is. I'm paid to use my mind to contribute. Well, that's just exactly what I'm going to do. From now on, I'm going to have the courage of my convictions. I'm going to be firm. Good for you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> and now, about that silly dog idea. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have it there first thing in the morning. <laughs> we're ready to start the scene now. Hi, Mitzi. Uh, we're not using the dog in this scene. Why don't you take him to makeup? Does he need it? No, but I've never liked the makeup man. <laughs> John, do we really have to go through with this idiotic scene? I wish you'd stop sulking, Joyce. No one else minds working with a dog. That's right, I'm used to it. Tracy. <laughs> now pay attention. This is the scene where you and Tracy find the baby in the car. Of course, we're not using a real baby. We're working with a dummy. Well, I'm used to that. Joyce! <laughs> now, you find the baby in this old car. Just one question. What is the baby doing in a wrecked car? I mean, how did it get wrecked? Maybe the little bugger was drinking. <laughs> now, come on. All right. Now, this is the car. Got it. And this is the baby. <laughs> it's lying face down on the floor of the back seat. I told you it was drunk. You lift it out of the car, Joyce, and clasp it to your bosom, thus demonstrating that while you may be a police officer, at heart you are still... Built like a... Joyce! <laughs> still a woman. All right, places. Let's run it once. Action. Did you hear something? Yes, I think it's coming from this car. <laughs> Wait a second. Yes, there's something in this car. Careful, I'll cover you. I am pulling a gun on a baby. You don't know it's a baby yet. Look, it's a baby. <laughs> Joyce, why are you being deliberately destructive? Because this is a stupid scene, based on a half-witted premise. You could at least give it a chance. I don't care what anybody says, this is not good for the show. She's right, John. That's exactly what I told the network. You did? I threatened to quit if they didn't listen to me. You actually threatened to quit? Yeah. But they just laughed at me. Why? Because I said it right after they fired me. <laughs> just thinking, Doug probably feels very depressed with this being his last day. I think it'd be nice if we all made a special effort to be pleasant to him. It always takes a special effort to be pleasant. <laughs> what do you all think about getting Doug something to remember us by? How about a dog and a baby? <laughs> eh, eh, eh. Oh, John, please, I'm just trying to make his last day more pleasant. Well, look, you can count on us. We'll make him feel terrific. Sure, we'll make him feel fine. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, gang. Hi, Doug. Doug, uh, we all want you to know how terrible we feel about this being your last day. Oh, thanks. It makes me feel a lot better about leaving. Hey, kid, buck up. Write the bullet, fall in a grenade. I'll try to. But look, so life gave you a bayonet in the gut. So you stepped on a booby trap and blew your behind off. So you, you caught some flack and your face is full of shrapnel. So what? Big deal. Keep smiling, you know what I mean? Sure. Boy. Poor devil. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Tracy. Yes, Doug. I did like I said. I stopped being a yes man and I showed some backbone. 
Yes, I know. And I'm proud of you. You think maybe now you'd be willing to go out with me? Not that proud. <laughs> Doug, I want you to know how sorry I am about what happened. I mean, we're all responsible. That's not true, Joyce. I did it to prove something to Tracy. But she was right about me. I'm a born loser. I always have been, and I always will be. Doug, get a grip on yourself. You're all going to be better off without me. Nothing I do goes right. So I'm walking out of your lives. Forever. I went the wrong way. <laughs> God, I didn't realize that he felt that bad. Must be terrible to think you're a failure at everything. It is. <laughs> I wish there was something we could do to make him feel better. Let's face it, Joyce, there's nothing any of us can do to make Doug feel better. No, but there's something one of us could do to make him feel more of a man. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Just go out with him. That's all it would take. Then why don't you do it? Tracy, the man feels bad enough. <laughs> it's a good idea, Trace. You know, he's always asking you out for a date. Tracy, Doug stood up at the network to impress you. All we're suggesting is that you go out with him for one evening. <laughs> What's my motivation? I believe I can handle this. Your motivation is compassion for a fellow human being. You demonstrate the hidden resources of your character and win the respect of the entire cast by proving yourself a better person than any of us. I can accept that. All right. All right, I'll do it. I'll go and find him and ask him to go out with me tonight. That a girl, Trace. It is a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done. <laughs> Unfortunately, that isn't saying much. <laughs> Well, thanks for a lovely evening, Doug. You're welcome. I uh, had a really great time. I'm glad. I'd invite you in, but it's awfully late. Oh. What time is it? It's 9.15. <laughs> All right, come on in. Come on. I don't blame you for not wanting me around. I've no fun. I couldn't even watch the picture tonight without getting depressed. It was supposed to cheer you up. Well, maybe we picked the wrong picture. I wasn't in the mood to see Network. <laughs> I can't get over it. Yesterday, I was at the top of the heap. Today, I am the heap. Come on, Doug. It's not that bad. I'm sure you'll find something else to do. How? Oh. I was a network vice president. I'm not qualified to do anything else. I mean, what did you do at the network? I was an idea man. When someone came up with an idea, I said, good idea. <laughs> so once I had to go and say bad idea, and here I am. Doug, no, cheer up. I'm sure there are thousands of jobs out there for someone with a mind like yours. What kind of jobs? Do you like to sell shoes? Seriously? I've never been so depressed in my life. I don't know what to do, where to turn. I'm all mixed up, confused, desperate. Doug, if you're really that depressed, maybe you should consider getting some professional help. Why don't you let me send you to my astrologer? What's the use? I'd be better off dead. Doug, think about the fact that you and I are sitting here in my apartment. 
Maybe I ought to kill myself. Think about what a nice time we had. I'll leave a suicide note. Think about this. Copy to the network, copy to my mind. Didn't I kiss cheer you up? You only did that because you were feeling sorry for me. It was a mercy kiss. It's not true, Doug. Yes, it is. Lips are cheap. You were right, Tracy. I'm a loser. I'm better off ending it all. All right. All right, Doug. I can see that there's only one way to convince you. That life is worth living. Why? Why? Why do I always have to be such a wonderful person? Slow down, Paul. Ooh, we're ready, John. Uh, John, couldn't we just put Hugo in a dog suit? Let's run the scene. Okay, we might as well get this over with. Oh, Joyce, I wish you wouldn't put it quite that way. Oh. Come on, Tom. Okay, let's uh, take it from the top. Action. Chief, what do you say? Let me raise this little tight myself. I'm in charge of this operation, and I'm not standing for any nonsense. You know. Sorry, Joyce. Naughty call. If you attack Fletcher, no more treats. This isn't going to work. Everybody take five. Tracy! Hi, Joyce. How did the date go last night? Do we have to dwell on it? Well, what do you suppose could have happened last night? Good morning, John. I have a hunch. Hiya, sweetheart. I buy your hunch. You people are looking at a new man. And you know why? Doug, please. <laughs> because yesterday I was something that I am not this morning. Doug, for God's sakes. And you know what that something is? <laughs> fired. I'm not fired anymore. What? Oh, Doug, that's wonderful. I know. This means you're talking to executive network liaison. How did that happen? I woke up this morning with a... A new confidence, a, a new self-respect, a new, what shall I say? Hickey. <laughs> a new sense of myself. I went to the network brass this morning, and I told them the undercover woman's show is mine. I should be allowed to make the decisions, and they bought it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's not fired? That's right. Does that mean that, uh, last night was for nothing? Yes, dear. First time? Men. Doug, now that you're, uh, in charge, what about the dog and the baby? They're out. Does that mean you don't need Colin anymore? Yeah, sorry, Mitzi. But this is a cold, hard business, and the sooner he learns it, the better. He's finished, washed up. Take a walk, Rido. <laughs> Listen, there are other shows. Great shows. Loretta. Rock <laughs> a little hasty getting rid of the dog and the baby what are you saying Joyce well 
I was thinking it might be nice for an undercover woman to take care of a baby in the police station. It gives her a certain warmth, humanity. It shows that she's not just a tough cop, but inside there's a woman with, with feelings, tenderness, maternal instincts. <laughs> Joyce, you've been around long enough to know that when you play a scene with a baby, the audience watches the baby, and they'll never look at you. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs>